children to hospital. The healthcare begins upon a child's jurisdiction. What we would do, we would let provinces deal with the healthcare delivery of services for their population. And they know what it is more important for you in Ontario. And they, they know better. We don't manage the health at the federal level. They know better. So our policy on healthcare is to be sure that every province will have the need and the resources for giving good healthcare delivery of services for you, for Canadians. And so that's why we will transfer the GST. The GST, the money that the federal government received from the GST is 40 billion dollars a year. So we'll transfer that. We'll transfer the tax point. And so Ontario, Quebec, and every province will be able to have the money for their responsibility. So that's a policy that respects our constitution. I don't know what is what is your biggest challenge in Ontario in, in the healthcare uh, services. The provincial government knows better, and we know better. And if you want a special <coughs> You would just have to go and ask your member of your, your, your provincial government. So, but the provincial government will have the money. <coughs> That's the most important part. And on a lot of issues, we are very different. I can speak about immigration. And I, I can speak about, you know, to not try to pander to every, every ethnicity and people that came in our country to share our Canadian values. And I can tell you an anecdote that I think yeah, you may know if you're following me or not, but when I was running for the Conservative Party of Canada, I wanted to be a leader, and I received a call from a Muslim organization in Ontario. And the, the Muslim organization said to us, Maxine, I want you to come to our organization and speak to our people, because we have about 5,000 of our members that are also members of the Conservative Party of, of Canada. So if they want their support, if you want to have a meeting with us, that would be important. And the lady said, you're the last uh, candidate to uh, do that interview. <laughs> so, you know, I went to Ontario, to Toronto, I did an interview, and they, they were very really fair because they were asking the same questions to every candidate. And at the end, the lady said, Maxine, it's the most important questions for you. If you don't have, because our members will look at it, decide for which candidate, they will vote at the next, uh, at your election for the council, for the leadership of the council of the Party of Canada. So she said, if you don't have the answer right now, you can go back to Ottawa, think about it, and call us back or write your answer. You can think about it here 15, 30 minutes if you want. But I said, what is the question? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, what would you do for the Muslim community? And I look at her, I said, that's a question? She said, yes. I look at her, I said, no. I will do nothing for the Muslim community. I will do nothing for the Jewish community. I will do nothing for the Christian community. But I will do everything for you as a Canadian. And that's why, you know, everybody is a Canadian first, and not a Muslim Canadian, not a Chinese Canadian, not an Hindu Canadian. You are Canadian, and our policy is for every Canadian. So no country. I told her, you know, I'll do everything for you as a Canadian. I will lower your taxes. I will respect you. I will respect your freedom of speech, your freedom of opinion, your freedom of religion. But also, I will respect people that uh, want to criti criticize uh, some religion. They have the right to do that. They have, you have the freedom and they have the right to criticize. But the most important, we are doing politics for Canadians. And on the name of our party, the People's Party, because we are putting the people first. You know, uh, you know, foreign aid, we want to bring back that money in Canada, save four billion dollars, because we want to put our country first. And some people are saying, you know, it's not generous Mexico doing that, because you know, some country needs, need, need, uh, needs our help. I said, yes, we will be there if there is a humanitarian crisis in our country or environmental disaster. But we won't be there to build roads in Africa or bridge in Africa. That's not our role. We won't be there to fight climate change in Africa. The federal government is doing that. The federal government is doing that right now. We are spending $2.3 billion in Africa to fight climate change. We won't do that. We will bring that money here in Canada to help Canadians first. And that's not normal. That's on some reserve. Uh, 
that we, we don't have uh, clear running water. You know, we need to have our people first. That's too much for us. That's the same thing on our relationship with the UN. Yes, we'll be part of the UN, but at the same time, we won't participate in all their pet projects, like, you know, the migration compact, the UN migration compact. We need That's to control bad. our immigration policy in the UN And we don't want somebody from the UN telling us uh, what, what will be our immigration policy. It is too important for the future of this country. So, yes, we won't sign that migration compact. We won't sign the Paris Accord also. Because we know that the climate is changing and it will always change. And actually, that's the normal climate changing. So, what we know is there's no emergency. There's no climate crisis emergency. And so, that's why we are asking for more studies. All the studies right now on the impact on CO2 on the climate. On climate. Why are not studying the impact on the, on the sun on climate, the impact on the ocean on climate? Let's have more studies. It's not time to change our way of life dramatically and, 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 being, and not being sure that uh, we achieve the goal. So that's why we, we won't impose no uh, carbon tax changes. We won't impose more regulation. We know that the environment is a shared jurisdiction with provinces. And if a province wants to do something on climate change, it's OK. But at the federal level, we won't add more taxes and regulation. We will let province, provinces deal with it. But also, we want to do something concrete for the environment. And we will spend money to do something concrete and concrete actions for the environment. We need, we need to, in Canada in 2019, to have clear lake, clear river, clear land. And it's too bad that in Montreal and in Vancouver, the city of Montreal and the city of Vancouver are putting the situation in the ocean and the synchronous river. We need to change that. We're in 2019, we can do that. There are a lot of concrete policies that we can do for the environment. But don't count on us to fight climate change. And I won't say that there's an emergency. There's no emergency. Actually, every 12 years and 20 years, our, our world was saying the same thing 20 years ago. If we don't do something before 2000, that would be the end of the world. That would be a disaster. That's not the case. We need to look at that. We need to have more data. And we cannot change our way of life based on computer data. And that's, that's computer data. And, and computer are very, can be very efficient. But you know, it's so complicated, it's so complex, the weather and, and, and the climate, that there's a lot of factors. And I believe Patrick Moore, uh, one of the ex co founders of the Greenpeace movement, that said that there's no climate emergency. I believe also 200, 200 European scientists that wrote the letter last week uh, to the UN, and they were saying there's no climate emergency. So that's a uh, that's our position on climate change. And I'm ready to debate that. I will be uh, at the national debates, as you know. I'll be there. And that's very important. That's a big step for us. Because I don't believe that we are at 2% in the pool. Uh, you know, I'm supposed to be at 2% in the pool since the creation of the park. <laughs> so, so, and I'm campaigning all across the country. <coughs> I did I didn't get from Eastern Canada to Western Canada. I don't know how many times I did it. And I'm still at 2%. <laughs> so, <laughs> so something is happening in this country. When I'm doing a rally in Vancouver, and we have 500 people there. When I'm doing a rally in Calgary, and we have 550 people there. And Lucia did a rally actually two days before me last week in Calgary. And we had 100, person over there, 100 people over there. So something is happening. I'm doing a rally in Mountain New Brunswick. We have 200 people. So people are ready to hear our message, and that's the most important for us. Our biggest challenge is to be known. I think that half, think that half of the population don't know that we exist. So that's why we need to be out there. And when we have half of the population, 52% of the population, that are saying that they're ready to vote for a new party at the federal level, we are the only new party at the federal level. So we just have to know that we exist. That's why, that's why it was important for us to participate in national debates, and we are. That's why also we